Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is absolute value. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com and then make sure you click the sixth grade link. There's two sixth grades, one's for California and one's for the rest of the nation and you're the rest of the nation. Anyway, so there's our common core strand for our really groovy teachers and um, our question here is how can we find and interpret the absolute value of rational numbers okay you haven't seen what absolute value is but all absolute value is is just uh, the distance from zero on a number line so uh, for example the absolute value of negative three is how many how far is negative three from zero okay so uh, the absolute value is always talking about this distance right here. So it's three units from zero. Um, so um, uh, the absolute value, uh, well, because negative three right there is three units from zero right there. Okay, so then we say um, uh, that the absolute value of negative three is three. Anyways, how about the, the absolute value of positive 3? How far is this number from 0 right here? Well, it's also 3 units from 0 right there. So um, uh, the absolute value of positive 3 is also 3, okay? So the absolute value is written, is written with these vertical lines next to it right there. So these vertical lines are our math symbols to write absolute value. It has to be on both sides of the line right there. So the absolute value of negative 3, that's what this says right here, equals 3. And the absolute value of positive 3 also equals 3 right there because those are the two numbers that are 3 units from 0 on a number line. Okay, so here's a problem here. We can talk about absolute value. Uh, Ronnie is a deep sea diver. Yesterday his dive was at an elevation of negative 32 feet. So we're going to use a number line to find the absolute value of negative 32. Okay, since we're diving, we're going to do a vertical number line right here. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and graph negative 32. So zero's right here. Here's negative 10, negative 20. Here's negative 30. So this is negative 35. So negative 32 would be right about there, right there. Okay, and then. Uh, the distance from 0 to uh, this point R, R standing for Ronnie right there, how far is uh, this point away from 0 right there? Well, it is uh, 32 units away from 0 right there, okay? So we just want to know what's the distance from 0 on a number line. I'm out in my truck. You can hear the traffic go by. So the absolute value of negative 32 is equal to 32, okay? So I like to think that absolute values are negative choppers. They take away negatives right there, okay? Remember, absolute value is just how far this number is from zero on a number line okay all right uh, so the distance can never be negative on absolute values so the absolute value of a number will never be negative remember they're like negative choppers they take away negatives okay so uh, compare the absolute value of two numbers that are opposites and explain your reasoning. Okay, well, we did that negative 3 and positive 3, but let's try 5. Uh, 5 and negative 5 are the same distance from 0, but in the opposite directions. So the absolute value of 5 and the absolute value of negative 5 is both equal to 5. Okay, all right, so the depth of Ronnie's dive... Uh, is her, did I say her? I think it's him right there, is his distance below sea level. Okay, this should be him right here, so I'll change it right here in the next couple of slides. You won't see that, so uh, I went back and forth on that. So anyway, um, uh, is uh, his distance below sea level his? Sorry about that. Let me fix that. Uh, does your math teacher make mistakes on the board? I do all the time. My kids correct me all the time. Anyways, because depth represents distance, it's never going to be negative. So find the depth of Ronnie's uh, uh, of dive, I guess. And Well, I had a lot of typos here. Uh, how is the depth related to the elevation of negative 32? Okay, what that's saying is, is uh, Ronnie is at a depth of 32 feet. So this negative 32 just means Ronnie's at 32 feet uh, below sea level right there. So his depth is the absolute value of the elevation right there okay so this negative 32 just means it's going down and so uh, the depth is he's 32 feet down um, below sea level so how is the expression negative 32 related to Ronnie's depth right there okay well just uh, says that Ronnie's depth is the distance from the sea level to 32 feet uh, underneath the sea level which is negative 32 okay so Ronnie's depth is the absolute value of negative 32 okay all right so we can find the absolute value of decimals fractions and other rational numbers in the same way that we find absolute values of integers okay so here we go let's try this the students in Mrs. Talbot's class 
glass recorded their weights for two days. So the results are shown in this table. Positive values indicate weight gains in pounds and negative values indicate weight losses in pounds. So, so this positive 3 fourths means uh, there's a weight gain and this negative 5 eighths means that there's a weight loss in the two days right there. Okay, so this is a loss in weight. Uh, Jake gained two and an eighth pound and Megan lost uh, three eighths of a pound. So well, let's graph these numbers on the number line, then we'll find their absolute values. Okay, let's graph uh, the three fourths right here. Okay, so um, uh, Benyon is at three fourths. Okay, so let's check out this number line. These are divided into here's one fourth, here's two fourths or half. This is three fourths. So here's Benyon right here. We'll go ahead and graph that right there. Okay, and then this negative five eighths. Okay, well negatives back this way. So Abby's back this way. Here's Here's negative one half, which is negative four eighths. So this would be negative. So here would be like negative two eighths, negative four eighths. This would be negative six eighths. So Abby's going to be here at negative five eighths right there. Okay. All right. And then negative uh, one and seven sixteenths. All right. So let's see. Emma is going to be. So she lost negative one and seven sixteenths. Okay. All right. Well, if this is one fourth and this is uh, uh, four sixteenths. Okay. Which means this is eight sixteenths, which is one half. So seven sixteenths is going to be like right there. Okay. So uh, Abby's uh, dot is going to be right there. Jake is at two and an eighth. So Jake, um, uh, here's two. Here's a fourth. So one eighth is half of a fourth. So there would be Jake right there. Okay. And then uh, so we're just practicing our graphing skills. Negative three eighths. Okay. So here's um, uh, negative one fourth, which is negative two eighths. This would be negative four eighths. So negative three eighths would be right there for Megan right there okay all right let's just slide that up right there and it says uh, then find their absolute values well remember you guys the distance from zero to each point on the graph is always positive so that's going to be the absolute values so how far is three-fourths from zero well it's three-fourths how far is negative five-eighths from zero it's five-eighths this is going to be they're always positive so it's uh, this is going to be one and seven sixteenths this will be two and one eighth and this will be positive three eighths. So we graphed them on the number line and then we found their distance they are from zero and that's what absolute values are right there. Okay, so just write the positive numbers there. All right, so explain how the absolute values of the positive and negative weight changes relate to the starting weights of the students. All right, well, the absolute values of negative weight changes represent losses from the starting weights, and the absolute values of the positive weight changes represents the gains of the starting weights. I think that's what they're asking right there. All right, so find all integers that have an absolute value of 7. So they have a number line here. So we're going to go ahead and graph the numbers that are 7 units from 0. So the distance from 0 to integers with an absolute value of 7 is going to be seven units right there. So let's graph integers located at seven units. So we'll graph seven right there because it's seven to the this side. And if we go seven this way, we'll graph negative seven also right there. Okay, so there they are. Whoops, I graphed um, uh, negative five. That's that little guy supposed to go right there. Okay, let's do that. Let me let me uh, copy that. Gosh, three mistakes in this uh, here. Okay, so. Uh, let me fix that. I'll take that out. I send these to teachers around uh, around the country, actually. So, so uh, what numbers uh, uh, have an absolute value that's equal to seven? Well, negative seven and positive seven. Okay, that's what have an absolute value of, of seven right there. Okay. Let me get rid of this little dude right here. I'm just copying and pasting. Okay, so the absolute value of um, uh, so both uh, seven and negative seven have an absolute value of of uh, seven right there okay all right you guys so so Barney says there are always two numbers that have uh, given absolute values you know like negative seven and seven is seven <laughs> so is Barney correct and explain well there's one exception you guys so um, uh, boy, there's another mistake right there I wish I'd had time to fix this but uh, um, only one you guys O N L Y only one sorry you guys only one number has an absolute value of zero zero is the absolute value of zero so it only has one absolute value okay negative um, absolute values are like negative choppers okay all right you guys take care